The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, June 14th, 2022, featuring Sam Rines of Arbor Data Science discussing the labor market. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of our podcast series, Talking Data. I'm Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, and I'm joined today by Sam Rines of Arbor Data Science. Welcome, Sam. Hey, Kristen. Good to see you. Today, we wanna talk about and get an update on the labor market. So right now we have raging inflation dynamics, and that's only half of the Fed's mandate. What is the latest on the labor market side of the equation? Yeah, so I think it's it's a really interesting dynamic with the Fed. You have inflation that's just absolutely raging and it's getting all the headlines, right? The, the Fed has kind of put the labor market on the back burner, assuming that it's just going to be okay. Right? You have very low unemployment, lots of job openings. The Fed really doesn't see that as being that big of a deal. And markets have, adop- have adopted the same view that you can kind of ignore what's going on in the labor market, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but it, you know, when you kind of get this large of a swing in the pendulum to one side, you tend to have it swing back pretty hard the other way at some point. And that, you know, so it's kind of an inflation is the story of today. It's likely that the labor market is going to be somewhat of the story of tomorrow. And it could really complicate the outlook for how far the Fed can really bring its current very hawkish stance. What's going on specifically if we start out with the tech space? Oh, it's, it's, this is a really interesting one. You, you've begun to see some pretty significant layoffs and talk of being overstaffed. We saw that early on with Amazon when it announced earnings and said, hey, you know, we hired a lot of people to build out this, you know, pandemic coverage of deliveries and warehouses. We're pretty, we're pretty much done hiring now. You know, they're probably not going to make any headlines by uh, laying off workers anytime soon, uh, but they're but they're pretty well staffed. And then you began to see other pieces of the tech market uh, begin to announce either layoffs or you know uh, Meta, you know the you know, we call it Facebook, uh, but Meta said you know we're going to do a hiring freeze. And you know there recently was Coinbase announcing that it's going to lay off 18% of its workforce or a thousand people. I mean, that's a pretty substantial number and it's happening across tech. It's not isolated to uh, crypto. It's not isolated to kind of the work from home darlings. It's it's pretty widespread uh, that companies were afraid they wouldn't be able to find workers and they were competing for talent. Uh, and they figured out a little late that they were a little overstaffed. Uh, so that's beginning to become a much more significant issue that I don't think is going anywhere anytime soon. If you look at the different parts of the country, you have a nice chart here to show what's going on in some of the larger metro markets. Yeah, so this is really intriguing. Uh, So you 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 have Chicago, which is not known as a tech hub by any stretch, but it is known as, you know, someplace that's pseudo manufacturing, uh, significant on the agriculture side uh, and financial. And, you know, it's, it's actually holding up pretty well here. Uh, the keys to the kind of the keys to unlocking the meaning behind these charts is people tend to search for work uh, when you know they're they're pretty comfortable, right? They they see a very strong labor market. They have a positive outlook for the U.S. economy. You know they they tend to browse around and see what they can find and maybe do some switching. Uh, what you're beginning to see, very similar to what we saw during COVID, is is a pulling back in. If you have a good job and you believe that you're not going to go anywhere, you're like, eh, maybe I won't look around. Maybe I'll be happy with where I'm at and just do a little bit of a better job or try to impress my boss. Uh, but you know, that's you know, that's not really happening in Chicago. You're just kind of seeing kind of a normality of job searches there, where you are seeing a lot of people beginning to pull the reins in and not search for work, is in San Francisco and Boston and Austin. Uh, those three markets are well known for uh, being tech hubs or biotech hubs, uh, receiving a lot of VC dollars. And we've seen a lot of announcements from a lot of the larger venture capital and uh, private equity companies saying, hey, uh, listen, startups, you need to buckle down and have 18 months worth of cash and 
the easiest way to you call it uh, you know slow your cash burn uh, is to get rid of headcount. And if you're you know looking around and saying how do I you know really sure myself up for what could be a venture capital winter, eh, you're gonna you're gonna continue to look at your employees as expendable and try to figure out which ones are and which ones aren't. And Sam, then your next chart focuses in on the U.S. workplace mobility. What's driving this decline? I, I, this is this is one I think is almost impossible to perfectly parse. Uh, you, you've had a lot of things going on, uh, right? We had this big return to the office that everyone was kind of excited about, and you know more people were driving, more people were beginning to go to restaurants, et cetera. That has fallen off a cliff. I mean, there's no other way to really say it. Uh, you're simply not seeing as many people go back as you were or as you would have expected at this point. Um, and, you know, there's a big drop in, uh, call it earlier in the year, uh, that was mostly probably due to Omicron. Um, that, you know, makes a little bit of sense. You know, you did have some people begin to pull back their office reopenings around that. But once we got past Omicron, uh, people, people generally were going back to the office and beginning to get back to some sense of normality. Uh, once gas prices spiked, you began to see some of that work from home flexibility flexed again. If you don't have to go to the office more than a couple of days a week, you probably don't want to right now, right? It's a way to give your kind of give yourself an inflation raise uh, is to avoid spending an extra 50 to $100 on transport costs. And that makes a lot of sense in this type of environment when you're not necessarily seeing uh, uh, you know, a, an uptick in pay for going to the office, you know, you, you, you know, stay at home and maybe work from home and do two days at the office or maybe one day at the office or maybe no days at the office. It, it's, it's a pretty interesting dynamic that I don't think is going to go anywhere until we begin to see gasoline prices significantly fall. And even then, this is almost more of an embedding of the work from home mentality. Let's turn next to talk about wages. Wage gains have been very volatile. What cracks are starting to emerge in the labor market? It's, it, this, this is where I think it's actually pretty uh, intriguing and actually kind of a mild positive news. Uh, leisure and hospitality, uh, the green on the screen, that tends to be where you see the lowest wages paid. Uh, and seeing gains that are pretty strong there is actually pretty positive, right? That's what you want to see. You want to see the workers that are at the lower end of the pay scale beginning to have some extra income coming in, getting a little bit of a higher pay, because that will help offset some of the higher costs of life, right? Gas and groceries. And leisure and hospitality you tend to do in person, right? So you tend to actually have to drive somewhere to go and work. Uh, so you do need to continue to see those wages. That'll, that's somewhat of a positive. I wouldn't say it's a tailwind, uh, but at all, because gasoline and grocery prices are well above what they're getting for wage gains, uh, period. But it is somewhat of a positive that those costs are being offset to a degree. Uh, the construction and manufacturing front, those two actually tend to be two of the higher paid uh, industries. Uh, and you're still seeing some gains on the manufacturing front, not as much as uh, might be expected, but you are seeing very strong gains on the construction side of things that I do think are probably reminiscent of, uh, call it not necessarily a housing bubble, but a significant shortage of professionals within the construction industry. It's very difficult to find licensed plumbers, electricians, etc. Uh, so those wages are likely to have a longer term tailwind uh, than simply home building. In summary today, Sam, what should we watch for next? It's it's interesting. I, I do think that, you know, you're going to have a pretty aggressive Fed against uh, any sort of inflation pressure. And they're going to continue guiding that inflation is a problem and they're going to continue to somewhat uh, kind of lay aside uh, the labor market. Uh, and anything going on there, after all, you don't really have that much negative data, particularly on the official front, for the labor market. Yeah. I mean, a sub 4% unemployment rate, it's pretty hard to say, oh, we're beginning to see cracks in the labor market until you actually get the data in uh, to show it. And you're still sub 2, uh, 250K on initial jobless claims. So I do think they're going to continue to kind of sideline 
uh, the labor market for now. Uh, so what I, where I do think you could begin to have the narrative shift uh, is if you begin to have some, call it downward pressure on inflation metrics and a significant amount of upward pressure on labor market me uh, metrics. And that's across the board. Uh, you know, some of the higher frequency stuff, uh, work from home type um, metrics like the office metric that we looked at earlier. Uh, it, once you begin to continue to see those creep lower, it's going to be more and more difficult for the Fed to ignore the labor market. And you're going to have more of a balanced view vis-a-vis -vis what's going on in the real economy um, for the average worker. Well, Sam, thank you for your thoughts today, and thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions on Arbor Research, Bianca Research, and Arbor Data Science, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Have a great day, everyone.